Good damn morning, Americans. Jericho Green here with you once again. Got to give a big shout out to my man Brett in Australia. Crikey. Look at the size of the picker on that crocodile. <laughs> Sorry, man. I have to take every opportunity I can to do that. <laughs> but hit me up in the comment section showing love from Australia. I appreciate that, man. What's up to your friends as well? I do have a lot to get to and a bit of good news at the end. Hopefully, I don't forget. Now, I want to start with a little uh, dad moment I had yesterday. So my family and I were at the beach. Uh, we like to get places early before everybody else does and leave when the crowd show up. Um, so we're there and playing with the kids and stuff. And then I smell an odor, a familiar odor. I'm like, somebody's smoking weed. So of course I have my kids around, so we can't have that. So I smell it, my wife looks at me, I see it, and then my daughter's like, somebody's smoking something, that's gross. I'm like, oh shit. So what do I have to do, people? That's right, I gotta go over and talk to them. So I get up, they're about 50 yards away. Um, so I get up, and I go over there, and I get probably 10 yards from them. And I was like, hey fellas, how you doing? They're like, what's up, man? I said, hey, you think you guys could, uh, take that elsewhere you know I'm not trying not to get the kids fucking high as shit and they were like oh yeah man my bad my bad I'm sorry they're real cool about it but I remember that time I remember being young you know they were these guys are probably in their early 20s definitely under 25 it was around lunchtime so they probably had a lunch break looking for a cool spot to smoke I remember that little spot to drink smoke whatever you might be into um, but even at that age Man, you don't do that shit around kids. You don't do that shit where there's families. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Of course, when you're a parent, things change. Your views change. I get that. But when I was young, in my early 20s, I knew better than that. I was, If I was with some buddies and somebody had a bright idea like that, I was the one to say, yeah, maybe we should take this elsewhere. Or, there's a family over there. You don't do that shit in front of kids. The fuck? So there's any young people... <laughs> watching this who plan on smoking bud in a fucking public place don't do it around kids that was my my dad moment i was like oh shit here we go but it was cool they were cool it worked out but let's not smoke bud around the youngins so <laughs> Alyssa milano you disgusting piece of hollywood shit aka my carol baskin AKA the woman that's been on more dicks than foreskin. She's backtracking. Look behind you, Alyssa, before you do all that backpedaling. You don't want to run into anything. So, of course, she's on Joe Biden's senile nutsack talking about, well, you know, this whole uh, sexual assault allegation that nobody's talking about. Fucking crickets. None of the mainstream mediocres are picking this shit up. And you know damn good and well. If it were Trump especially, or any other Republican, and you have these kind of allegations against you with the person themselves, and you got the uh, Larry King interview where allegedly the mother of Tara Reid was calling in, asking for advice on how she should handle this with her daughter involved, in a sexual assault allegation or situation with a prominent senator around the time that this happened? Look what they did to Brett Kavanaugh. And nobody could remember shit. Every person they brought in there was like, man, I don't even know if this party took place. Man, I don't remember shit. I don't remember shit. I don't remember shit is what everybody was saying. And they didn't even remember. This girl has some very, or this woman has some very uh, racy details. She has some very graphic memories of what happened. Basically, Joe Biden got her up against the wall somehow and put his fingers in her vagina without her consent. But they're not saying shit, nothing. They'd be, man, if this is a Republican or anybody not reading from their fucking leftist hymnal, they would be done for. This was all. This would be all we hear about. This would be up there with the Russia, Russia, Russia bullshit. Nothing. So Alyssa Milano comes out and says, 
Well, I hear you, uh, Tara. Like, I, I hear you. Like, that fucking matters to anybody. But she comes out saying, I hear you, Tara. And just like any other survivor, she should be heard and she, ha- she should have a safe space and all this shit. What happened? A couple weeks ago, you're talking about how Biden is pervertous is your friend and you don't want to throw away 15 plus years of friendship and we need to see how things play out and give poor Joe a break. He's just trying to eat butterscotch candy and tapioca pudding. That's what you told us? You disgusting fuck? What happened? Oh, the truth happened. And even though the mainstream mediocres are quiet as a fucking church mouse about it, you can hear a rat piss on cotton. They're so damn quiet about it. But you know what's up. You know Joe did that shit. And even if, even if he did it, just the allegations that he did it, you want to distance yourself from that. But he probably did. I don't know. If he did, throw the book at him just like anybody else. You can't be doing that shit. Unfortunately, she didn't have a husband or a set of older brothers that beat his ass. But if you do shit like that or you force yourself upon a woman, that's disgusting. You should be boiled. Alive. What happened, Alyssa? <laughs> what happened? That was your boy. That was your friend. You just knew he didn't do shit. All of a sudden, you're in the, the victim's corner. You're hashtag me too. What happened? When it was somebody, when it was Brett Kavanaugh especially, you wanted him to be hung. You wanted him to take a st- uh, walk up to the gallow. But your boy, he does it and you have all of a sudden, you have all this sympathy and understanding. And even in her stupid little tweet, she didn't come out and condemn Biden as pervertus altogether. She just was just, oh, well, the victim, we should listen to her. No, no, no. Don't fucking. Now's not the time to fucking be watching your words and treading lightly. You had guns a blazing towards fucking Kavanaugh. What happened? Where's that same veracity? Where's that same intensity? Huh? Not there, huh? Because you know your boy's a piece of shit. He probably sniffed your fucking hair back in the day. (laughs) Oh, you piece of shit. On to more Hollywood fucking nonsense. So my boy uh, sent me this. And it's been a while since I watched the movie. So I don't know if this is something they've been doing for a long time. Or this is something that's very recent. But he sent me this. And I posted it on my uh, YouTube page under community. And also posted it on my Facebook page, Jericho Green. So check out either one of those or both. Um... So, you know, in the beginning of a movie on Netflix, up in the top left corner, it'll have the rating. G, PG, PG PG-13, R, whatever. And it'll list graphic violence, nudity, coarse language, shit like this. Well, one that I've never seen before. This This is new to me. So my kids like that movie, the remake, The Karate Kid, with Jackie Chan and uh, Jaden Smith. And I've seen it a few times before. Like I said, my kids love it. And it's a good movie. It's a good movie. They moved to China from, I don't know, Detroit, somewhere in the U.S. They moved to China. They don't just gloss over the fact that they're relocating on the other side of the world. You know, it really has an effect on both of them. And they give that proper attention in the movie. And then there's a girl that he falls in love with, but the Chinese boys ain't having that shit, so they start fucking with Jaden Smith's character and all that, right? So in the upper left-hand corner, when you go to watch this movie, the first, uh, I don't know, warning or whatever you want to call it, it says, bullying. So right up there next to violence, nudity, whatever, you know, whatever it has in the movie, but in this one in particular, the first one says, Bullying. So you mean to tell me warning you of bullying in a movie is right up there with titties and violence? What's wrong with bullying? Who's going to watch this and say, oh, what's that? Bullying? Oh, that's it, kids. Sorry, we can't watch this shit. There's bullying in it. 
You know what's in a movie before you watch it. That's what drew your attention to the movie. That's why you're watching it, because it has the violence, nudity, whatever you want to see in a movie. That's why you're there. Bullying? I can't stand the fact that bullying has become one of these fucking buzzwords. Everything's bullying. If you say anything negative about somebody, you're bullying them. To me, when I was growing up, I thought bullying was, hey kid, give me your lunch money. That kind of shit. I thought that was bullying. But bullying is fucking everything. And I've said this before. Don't act like there's a set of people who bully and a people who get bullied. Because everybody gets bullied and everybody does bullying. There's always somebody lower than you on the fucking totem pole. There's always somebody further down the fucking food chain. We've all done it. I can't stand how they ha they want to have this class of fucking victims. <clears throat> of victims. Everybody's been bullied. You have an older sibling? You've been bullied. My brother was a fucking asshole growing up. I love him to death today. I will take a bullet or give a bullet for my brother. But growing up, he was a fucking dick. He used to beat my ass all the time. He'd sit on my chest, tap on my fucking chest like that till I cried. He'd let the spit hang out of his mouth and he'd suck it up at the last minute most of the time. He'd tease me until I cried the whole nine. The classic hallmarks of a fucking older brother. Been there, done that. We had a younger cousin that came to live with us. I fucked with him. There were kids in school that I fucked with. There were kids in school that fucked with me. What's this bullying bullshit? I would venture to say bullies are a part of life. Or bullying is a part of life. Just like life and death, birth and death. That's what it is. Bullying's right there. We've all been through it. We've all done it. Big fucking deal. Now it's in the beginning. Now it's in the the warnings of a movie. I don't know what the proper word for that is, but you know what I'm talking about. What's going to be up there next? They're going to start throwing in their other buzzwords, more ists and phobias. Is it going to say contains racism? Contains xenophobia, whatever the fuck they want to say, and so what? I don't understand why you would add that. What, what, what do you mean? What do you need to be warned about bullying? And that's the whole point of the movie. That's what gets the boy into taking martial arts lessons from Jackie Chan because he's getting bullied. The bullying creates an opportunity for him to better himself. You want to stop bullying? Start giving out free boxing lessons. Instead of giving these kids free lunches and giving their parents welfare, why don't you take some of that and give these kids free boxing lessons? Why doesn't the school provide that for free instead of some bullshit, unhealthy fucking lunch? All you kids getting fucked with? Come on in. I'm going to show you some combos. We're going to work on your feet. I'm going to show you proper footwork. So next time that bully messes with you, you cause blood to come out of his face. And that'll be the end of that. That'll be it. He won't bother you. He or she won't bother you anymore. I promise. Fucking bullying. Man. Our handshakes are getting softer and softer by the minute. They're trying to pussyfy the whole country. What the fuck? Bullying? Oh, man. Anyway, like I said, here's the bright note, the high note, the happy ending that I told you about. So, I'm looking online and I see this story and there's a mugshot of this piece of shit and his lips all fucked up and his eye is swollen. I'm like, <laughs> perfect, I gotta read this story. And it says attempted murder victim or attempted yeah attempted murder victim fights off home invader. So basically this piece of shit goes to a pretty nice neighborhood in Monterey and it said on Saturday morning, it didn't say the time, it just said Saturday morning. 
So this fucker goes to break into somebody's house. So the homeowner <clears throat> fought this dude off. It says that where he picked up the attempted murder charge was he hit the homeowner in the head with a shovel and a potted plant. Apparently he didn't do a very good job because the homeowner was able to fight him off until the cops showed up. So then it says that he fought with police. So I don't know if he got his lumps from the homeowner, which would be nice. Well, I wish the homeowner would have gave him a bullet, but whatever, because that's what you deserve when you violate someone pri someone's privacy. When you break into somebody's home, you should be shot. So I don't know who gave him the lumps, or maybe it was the police. It says that he did fight police and that drugs and alcohol could have played a role. You think so? Man, I wish the cops would have beat the dog shit out of this dude. I mean, he did, it didn't look like he got a heavy beating, but somebody definitely put some hands and or a nightstick on his ass. And you, he deserves worse. They should have cuffed him and let the homeowner come out there. They should have cuffed his ass, let the homeowner put on some dress shoes and come out there and stomp a mud hole in his ass. What are you breaking in somebody's fucking house for? That's their sanctuary. That's where you should be safe. When you get home and close those doors behind you, you should feel safe. Now what do you think that homeowner feels when he goes to bed at night? Or when he wakes up in the morning? Or when he comes in the kitchen or wherever he happens to encounter this piece of shit? How do you think they're gonna feel? How do you think that affects their life? So anytime I see some crook, some criminal, especially breaking into somebody's house, anytime I see their mugshot where they obviously got fucked up, I get happy. It causes blood to go to my penis. That shit's hilarious. Like I said, I wish he would have got shot because that's what thieves deserve. Thieves. That's what thieves deserve. I don't know if the guy had a gun or not, the homeowner. I bet you his ass is going to get one now. He should get one for free. You survive a break-in, you get a free gun and a thousand rounds of ammunition. Good luck. Fucking piece of shit. You should... <laughs> <laughs> that mugshot was so funny. He had a big ass goose egg right here on his cheek and his lip was all fucked up. So hopefully the cops gave him some good customer service. Speaking of customer service, that's what I'm about to get knee deep in, in this damn rat race. But you know how it goes. I try to be done with the left, but they just won't let me. Please subscribe. Hit that notification bell because every time it rings, a piece of shit liberal cries. Make sure you get your Jericho Green notification tone. Link in the description box, just a buck 29. Utilize the PayPal link and the Teespring link to get your green gear. I am Jericho Green. Man, I'm out.